You're absolutely right. I mean, if you look at the charter and if you compare the goals and the values enshrined in the UN Charter and you look at uh, the Swiss Constitution and the goals defined in there for our foreign policy, you see that they are pretty much identical. So what we want to see uh, is the UN succeed. We want uh, these goals and objectives uh, and values that are in the UN Charter to, to come into fruition. I mean, it's no secret that you look at the current uh, state of the world these values and objectives are not uh, are not fulfilled it's a process it's a i i like to to say the charter is a promise to the people of the world and that's a promise we have to fulfill and to get there uh, it takes hard work every day and, and we are ready to to do our share to contribute Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Next Page, the podcast dedicated to advancing the conversation on multilateralism. You are in the Ambassador Series, and this episode is rather special because it is released as Switzerland celebrates 20 years of membership in the United Nations. And we have with us Ambassador Jörg Lauber, who is the permanent representative of Switzerland to the UN in Geneva. Since September 2020, he was before then ambassador and permanent representative of Switzerland to the United Nations in New York. And before that, he was the deputy permanent representative here in Geneva. So he's got this overarching experience with the organization and he's, all, he's got sound experience in multilateralism. So it's a pleasure to have you with us, Ambassador Lauber. Before we dive in into the substance of our episode, the journey of Switzerland in the, in the UN for the past 20 years and more, please tell our audience a little bit about yourself and how you came to diplomacy and eventually to be the permanent representative of your own country to the United Nations. Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you for having me. It's a very nice, uh, great opportunity. Um, I grew up in Switzerland. I grew up in a town called Bar in the canton of Zug, the heart of Switzerland. I went to law school in Zurich. And then, uh, by chance, actually, I had a, an opportunity uh, to be a peacekeeper with the United Nations in uh, Namibia. And I uh, called it serendipity because um, it kind of changed my life uh, in a sense that after this experience in Namibia, I, I wasn't sure uh, if I really wanted to be a lawyer anymore and uh, then had another opportunity to do some kind of peacekeeping with the, the Swiss delegation uh, that still uh, serves at the border between uh, the two Koreas. And uh, during that experience uh, in Korea, Uh, I got more and more interested in, in this opportunity or this possibility to join the diplomatic career, uh, then the, the, the entry exam, and then and, and I've been a diplomat uh, since 1993. I had some uh, early postings, in, mostly in Asia, in Thailand, in China, and then, uh, as you mentioned, uh, a series of multilateral postings, uh, New York, in The Hague, in Bern also, and in Geneva. This helps... Uh, The, the longer experience with, with the United Nations, with multilateral processes. Um, when I came here, I found it really helps. It, it, it expands your networks. It expands your, or at least my understanding uh, for multilateral processes, how things uh, work, how to uh, approach uh, these issues. And of course, being here in Geneva as a Swiss diplomat is, uh, is very special. It's, uh, it's a great opportunity. It's a great responsibility also, but I'm, I'm extremely happy to be here now. And before we dive in into our subject of today, the journey of Switzerland in the United Nations, let's talk a little bit about Switzerland, you know, a sort of, uh, a sort of overview, a little bit of history. To most people, after all, Switzerland is about a few well-known iconic images and traditions, uh, yet Swiss history is full of fascinating uh, and important moments. So what are those moments, key moments of Swiss history for you? <laughs> it's a very long history. You know, it's more than 700 years, so there's many, many important moments. Um, maybe let me, let me mention maybe three. One, um, you know, I, I, I mentioned that I'm from the central part of Switzerland, a place that is very close to these locations where the, the original Switzerland 
the what we call in German Urschweiz, uh, started to come into being in the late 13th, early 14th century. So these these locations that are talked about in in those stories about early old uh, Switzerland were very close to my to my hometown. So I, I knew them very well, visited them regularly. So these early stories about Everybody knows William Tell and the Apple and 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 then the the original cantons and their alliance. They, they were always very significant to me. They're, they're parts history. They're a bit of folklore also. But they're very powerful, impressive uh, stories about independence and, and and freedom. A second point in history I think particularly significant was the transition in in eighteen forty eight from a, a loose federation of cantons to an, an actual confederation and the adoption of our first federal constitution. That was definitely a very significant moment, not least also because following that, the country succeeded also in overcoming you know, the experience we had gone through uh, or our ancestors had gone through uh, during foreign occupation and, and religious wars and to overcome that and to build a peaceful and, and prosperous society. I think that that's a very significant moment in our history. And maybe a third example, maybe not of the same significance, but important anyway, probably saw that in, in summer of this year, the Marriage Equality Act finally came came into force. And I think that's important as a, as a good example, how in Switzerland sometimes things do take a little longer, but how we discuss, Actual form of Switzerland, this semi-direct democracy is able to to adapt and to to integrate social change in a way that is peaceful and that is taking um, also an interest and in preserving and protecting uh, minorities uh, very well. So it's a very significant moment for me as well. And you said it before, 700 years of history, that's quite a long time. And Switzerland today has a place, as its place in the world, and I wanted to ask you, as a, as a diplomat who represents um, the whole of the country, what is, in your view, Switzerland's place in the world today? What does it bring to humanity? Switzerland is certainly known um, for its extraordinary political and social stability. It's also known for um, its economic success, and economic success that is due to uh, factors like uh, scientific excellence um, you know we've been ranked very high in when it comes to innovation private sector is very competitive also a successful migration policy that succeeds uh, bringing in and integrating also foreign talent at the same time we the swiss people i think we know very well that our own prosperity depends very much on outside factors also in particular on peace and stability in the world, and, and we know that this is not a given, that we have to contribute to that, which is why we engage also on all possible levels in, in this um, in, in foreign cooperation, uh, trying to contribute to peace and stability, sustainable development, human rights, etc. And that is a perfect segue for me to bring the conversation to our deep dive, Switzerland's journey in the UN. We said it before, 20 years in the UN. You mentioned direct democracy. This happened, Switzerland joined the UN because the people of Switzerland decided it would be so, and they decided so in March 2002. And, um, and, and that is also an important factor to note. I don't know how many countries actually decided by popular vote to join the United Nations. So that being said, Switzerland has been a member for 20 years. We said that. And very recently, Switzerland also got elected to serve on the UN Security Council for the years 23 and 24. So 20 years, not a short time, but not also a very, a very long time, but sufficiently to perhaps risk a first assessment of Switzerland's journey in this global organization. What is your assessment? Yeah, I, I think we are actually the only ones who came uh, to the UN by popular vote and, and also we should not forget that um, our multilateral engagement and engagement with the UN system as a whole, of course, didn't start 20 years ago. We like to say that multilateralism was invented in Switzerland. It certainly started here in Geneva with the establishment of the International Committee of the Red Cross in the 19th century. Then Switzerland has been a host state to the international, the multilateral system 
since the early since the late 19th century early 20th century league of nations and the un coming its european headquarters to geneva all the specialized organizations uh, being established in geneva and we've been active we've actively been a member of of several specialized agencies before we became a full member of the United Nations. I mentioned uh, our peacekeeping engagement that goes back to 1953, the end of the Korean War, etc. Nevertheless, it's of course true, you're right, that with the full membership in 2002, there were new responsibilities, but also new opportunities, uh, an increased engagement. And I think we, we succeeded in consistently expanding and deepening our engagement as a member state of the United Nations. We are active um, in all the three main pillars of the UN mandate, uh, peace and security. You know, we're bringing our experience as mediators uh, to the table. We are, again, a host state uh, for peace and negotiations. We were very active in the development of concepts like peace building, sustaining peace. Uh, so we also do a peacekeeping uh, still, military observers, etc., in the area of rule of law, human rights, um, we've also been very active. We've always supported issues um, relating to accountability, strong supporters of international courts, in, including international criminal courts. We were among the nations very active um, building up the new Human Rights Council that is now established uh, in Geneva. In the area of sustainability and, and humanitarian aid, again, uh, very active uh, ever since, uh, very active negotiating the Paris Climate Agreement, uh, very strong contributions to the development of the Sustainable Development Goals and now to the implementation as well. So I think over these 20 years, you can see that no surprises in the sense that we um, remain true to ourselves, but we've become more active, uh, bringing more of our experience to the table, and again, recognizing that the UN plays an important role in supporting international peace and stability, and that we want to contribute to that. And notwithstanding the long history of Switzerland and multilateralism as an entity, but also as a host, we mentioned the League of Nations. We are today recording this episode in a, in a building that was built to accommodate the very first global organization um, known to the history of international relations. But so, so notwithstanding all of this, the Switzerland made this choice to become a full member of the United Nations organization, an organization that has a particular uh, mandate and, and most of all is the custodian of the charter. So the charter brings these values, these powerful principles that are present in the background in many technical and specialized organizations, but it's really the, 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 the headlight of international cooperation is the charter and is the UN. So there you have the significance. So when we look at the future of Switzerland engagement in this key organization that the UN organization is, um, what can we say about that? What does Switzerland want to achieve? in the UN as an organization. You're absolutely right. I mean, if you look at the charter and if you compare the goals and the values enshrined in the UN charter and you look at uh, the Swiss constitution and the goals defined in there for our foreign policy, you see that they are pretty much identical. So what we want to see uh, is the UN succeed. We want uh, these goals and objectives uh, and values that are in the UN Charter to, to come into fruition. I mean, it's no secret that if you look at the current uh, state of the world, these values and objectives are not, uh, are not fulfilled. It's a process. It's a, I, I like to, th to say the Charter is a promise to the people of the world and that's a promise we have to fulfill and to get there uh, it takes hard work every day and, and we are ready to to do our share to contribute uh, to that so we want this uh, to go to go ahead this also means constantly um, considering and, and, and reinventing and reforming the UN as an organization are we still doing the right things are there other issues we need to look into are we still using the right methods is there other ways uh, of going about it We've always been very uh, reform-oriented, very uh, efficiency-oriented, and we will, we will continue to do that. We will continue to, to adapt and, and reform. Hearing your words, uh, what comes to my mind is this dimension of responsibility. Being a member of this organization, this era of transition, and, and being 
responsible for the promise that the charter makes to the peoples of, of, of the world that he mentioned in its own uh, forward um, is, is a responsibility. So I'd like to ask you, now that Switzerland is elected as a member of the Security Council for 2023-24, that responsibility is even heavier on your country, but it's also an additional leverage. So how do you think this will add to the role of Switzerland as a member state? That notion of responsibility was clearly uh, a motivation for us to be a candidate uh, for the Security Council and wanting to serve on the Council. And as you said, it's also an opportunity. I think what we will bring to the table is, uh, first of all, a, a, a team of very dedicated, highly motivated, very experienced uh, diplomats, especially the colleagues in New York, of course, the colleagues in Bern, but also all, all over the place, all over the world, actually. My colleagues uh, here in Geneva, colleagues in the embassies, a very l fairly large network of representations who are all ready now to contribute uh, to, this, to this task. What we also bring is, and I mentioned this before, we bring a set of values and objectives to the Council that are very important to a, a high number of member states. So I think many countries, and that's why we were elected, I think, uh, with a, a very high number of votes also. That, that reflects, I, I'd like to think, the trust these member states have in, in, in our values, in, in our objectives. We defined four priorities for these two years of membership. Number one is uh, contributing to sustaining peace, meaning sustainable peace, sorry, sustainable peace in the sense that we, you, you want to have a comprehensive look at what constitutes peace, including uh, socioeconomic development, uh, rule of law, human rights. That has been our pr approach for a while, and we want to bring that into the Council. The second priority, um, a fairly obvious one when you, when you look at it, especially from a Geneva perspective, is protection of civilians. Uh, response to our uh, tradition, that uh, our humanitarian tradition uh, includes, uh, of course, also um, better respect for international humanitarian law and humanitarian principles. A third priority is the link between climate change and security. We and a lot of member states increasingly recognize that there is a very clear correlation between what's happening with the climate and the impact it has on, on, on peace and security. The fourth, I mentioned this before, um, effectiveness of the council, uh, trying to think about, again, how to do it, how, what are the working methods to make this council effective and, and really have an impact uh, on the ground. And then beyond these four priorities and beyond what I mentioned, I think one, one more thing that we, we bring in is our profile as an honest broker. Switzerland, uh, as you know, is a neutral country. Uh, we also are universal in the sense that we have um, good relations with, with every country around the world. We talk to everybody. And that gives us uh, in, regularly a, a position uh, to be a negotiator, to be a facilitator, to be a mediator. And that's, I think, a role. We, first of all, we want to bring that. And second, a role that is expected from Switzerland also. It's also all uh, a, a perduring tradition of, of Switzerland. These 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 roles have, as mediator, negotiator, honest broker, um, linked to its its uh, long long term neutrality. You mentioned that, but is there is there a question there? How how Switzerland will manage or is managing as a member of the UN to combine this long tradition of good offices and mediation with the engagement? as a UN member states, is there a polarity, a tension? How, do, how does it play out in diplomacy for you as a, in, the, in the Department of Foreign Affairs? I don't see a tension at all. Uh, to the contrary, I see complementarity. As, as I think the UN, the membership in the UN Security Council is, as you said before, is, is an additional responsibility and an additional opportunity to play that role. You know, the UN as an organization, uh, Peace and security is its core business. Uh, the preamble says the UN has been established to save future generations from the scourge of war. And so we, as a member state in the United Nations, and now as a member of the Security Council, we, we will continue to push the organization to be that provider, to be a supplier of peace and security. And in, in complement to that, as a, as a, as a nation, uh, as a country, we, 
we will continue our own efforts uh, being a mediator in, in conflicts when there is an opportunity and, and the demand being a provider of good offices and being a host state again in Geneva. So these two roles as a member state within the UN, within the Security Council, pushing the organization to provide peace, to support uh, peace, but also Switzerland as an individual member state, uh, as an individual state to do that. Uh, this is very complementary. Today we're here sitting in Geneva and I wanted to spend some time with you talking about this, you know, unique place in the world it's unique for very many reasons but the the outstanding one is that in geneva a lot of people and organizations work for the world in various in various areas so if we start with the with with the quantity for example it's the european headquarters of the un we we, we said that uh, many times in this podcast episode but it's also host 180 permanent missions, if I'm right, and there may be one or, or two more there, but uh, dozens of international organizations, of course, the bulk of them, actually, hundreds of NGOs, uh, non-governmental organizations. There are there are a number of, uh, of entities, academic institutions of exceptional value, a vibrant private sector, innovators, creators, startups, etc. So it's really an amazing place when you look at it this way. And um, as a global hub of multilateral diplomacy, Geneva has a meaning, has a meaning in our world of international relations and multilateral diplomacy, but also to the world. So I wanted to hear you as the representative of Switzerland to the UN sitting in Geneva. What is the deeper meaning of Geneva for the world? I, of course, we have to let other people be the judge of that. But the way I see it, um, you're very right. Uh, Geneva is the is seat of the European headquarters of the United Nations, but it's in fact much more than that. It's, it's much bigger than that. It has so many actors, uh, a huge diversity of issues are being dealt with in Geneva, human rights, health, labor, intellectual property, uh, many, many, many more. There's a huge diversity of actors. But I think what combines these actors is, indeed, as you say, the, the work they do in Geneva has an impact around the world. And the former Director General of the, of the United Nations office here in Geneva said it, and I think he was right, and every person around the world is likely to be touched by something that has been decided or developed in Geneva every single day. Most of it in, in two ways. There are many standards decided in Geneva by international organizations that have an impact on our lives. Think, for instance, about the human rights standards, uh, rules, norms that are developed in the Human Rights Council. Think about technical standards uh, developed by the International Telecommunications Union, that, for instance, decide on what frequencies your mobile phone is using. Or think about the standards uh, developed in the International Labour Organization that protect the workers who dig the materials you need for your mobile phone. Or think about uh, currently high importance the national health standards developed by WHO to prepare us better for a possible next uh, pandemic. So the standard setting, the normative work here in Geneva is extremely important. Then Geneva is also a, a, a center, an operational center for many UN agencies, uh, most well-known probably the ICRC, but also organizations like the uh, International Organization for Migration or the High Commissioner for, for Refugees. They, they lead organizations, they backstop organizations uh, out of Geneva. Let's talk also about the special position that Switzerland has with the United Nations as a host country. So many ambassadors are our guests here, but this is a question that I can only ask you. You know, what, what is the role of Switzerland and your mission, your permanent mission in particular, in hosting the European headquarters of the United Nations? How does it play out? Is yet another responsibility? It's, uh, it's a wonderful role to play, I have to say. It's, um, it's a great privilege also. And um, as I said before, the, the diversity of actors, the diversity of guests here, is enormous, but our main task as host state, the, the way we see it, is really to provide the best possible working environment for all of these actors to be here and to do their work and to do their work as, as good as possible because it has an impact uh, for the people around the world. 
to be a bit more specific what that means, um, what we want is really to provide the best possible administrative services. This may sound very mundane, but you know the, the fact that the possibility to to travel to get a visa in time to travel to a conference uh, from anywhere in the world uh, to Geneva, then to, you arrive here, um, you want to um, settle with your family, you have children you want that, that need to go to school. These services uh, need to work, uh, uh, health services that need to be provided also to international agents. We make great efforts that this works well. Infrastructure has to work well. Um, some of the buildings that are used by international organizations and NGOs are, are supported uh, by Switzerland. Uh, host state, uh, by the way, host state always means federal Switzerland, canton of Geneva and city of Geneva. I'll never forget that. This co- the cooperation between the two is very important. So these these conditions, the working conditions, the infrastructure, including also digital infrastructure, that is very important. So, uh, and then it's up to the actors how to use that to develop their activities. Every once in a, in a while we go beyond that in the sense that we invest or promote uh, certain activities we see arising, we, we feel are important also for the international sector. Some of them we do in cooperation with other actors. Uh, maybe an example is um, the initiative Building Bridges, um, trying to bring together uh, the financial sector um, and the international organizations that tend to be on one and other side of the lake. That's why we use the, the term Building Bridges. But really the idea of, of, of promoting um, sustainable finance. Another example is uh, is a platform, the Geneva Internet Platform. When we started that more than 10 years ago, when, when e-diplomacy, digitalization uh, became more and more important, we wanted to promote that as well, uh, promote training uh, for diplomats, etc. And most recently, uh, an investment into um, anticipatory science diplomacy. That sounds more complicated than it is. The idea is we see so many changes and accelerated changes in scientific breakthroughs that will have an impact on society. And we feel that diplomats need to be aware of what's ahead and understand what's ahead so they are able to react to that and see, do we need norms to promote the, the opportunities that arise from these changes or to contain the risks? And that's, um, that's the idea behind an initiative called GESTA, Geneva Science and Diplomacy Anticipator. One of these recent examples of where we also take specific initiatives to to support, promote multilateralism and, and, and the discussions here in Geneva. You mentioned many things that are developing, that are linking the current Geneva to the future Geneva. There is also the, the factor of the pandemic. Uh, we should not forget that Geneva is, is a global hub for conferencing. Then the con- pandemic comes, and many of those things have to change on the fly, we saw how many organizations, including the UN Secretary here in Geneva, had to adapt in less than a quarter year to, to conditions that were simply unexpected. So some of these factors may alter the magical formula of Geneva, combining conferencing with in situ knowledge, this famous ecosystem of international actors. So how do you personally see the evolution of Geneva in the post-pandemic new normal going forward? Yeah, I think like everybody else, we we are still um, drawing lessons and trying to understand what happened and, 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 and find uh, ourselves in this new reality. I also felt that Geneva adapted fairly quickly and, and well to the new situation. Um, I, coming, I came from New York in, in summer 2020, and, and at that time, um, New York had been very hard hit uh, by, by the pandemic, and, and there was a, quite a high level of paralysis, I have to say, in, in, in the multilateral work. And coming to Geneva, I felt that maybe because it's a bit more decentralized and, and, and the individual agencies have uh, more flexibility also, I felt that Geneva organizations, by and large, had adapted very quickly uh, to pandemic uh, using technology, uh, using new working methods. And much of this is positive. You know, we, we, we over, 
came the paralysis, we were able to uh, have our discussions, take decisions um, by use of, uh, we all now, now know these virtual platforms. But we've also come to realization that they cannot probably for a long time, if ever, replace people meeting face-to-face, meeting in the same room, and especially having, you know, these corridor meetings, uh, going to have a coffee, uh, meet over lunch. In particular, when it's about uh, solving or agreeing on very complicated issues. So the, the, the key is really to find the right mix, what should be or can be done uh, using the new technology that, that allows uh, more inclusivity, uh, more efficiency, but also using very traditional standard ways of working in diplomacy, which so much where so much depends on, on the individual that is part of a negotiation. Again, what we want as a host state, we want to provide for both. Uh, So we want uh, for people to be able to travel to Geneva if there is need uh, to be here physically present. But we also want to provide the technology, the platforms, the conference rooms, the the, the data safety for full use of these new technologies. This is a lot of work. A lot of the work that we're doing here in this secretariat is actually... Uh, working on those things, try to adapt the conferencing and the way individuals meet among themselves here in Geneva to the new trends and be able to withstand new challenges like the one that the pandemic uh, brought to us. I think this is per- perhaps a good place to start wrapping up our episode, uh, Ambassador Lauer. And to conclude, perhaps, do you have a particular message for those who are listening? Yeah, maybe the following, you know, if you're not yet part of International Geneva, if you haven't been here or even looked at it closely, please do uh, find out uh, what is in it uh, for you. You will probably find discussions that pertain to your field of experience. You may even find solutions uh, to your problems or better yet, come here and become part of International Geneva. Ambassador Jörg Lauber, permanent representative of Switzerland to the UN in Geneva. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. 